I just came up with a productivity desk setup that is also portable. It includes a 11-inch M4 iPad Pro, a base model M4 Mac Mini, a 16-inch 4K OLED portable monitor, and a pair of Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Most of the time, I use my iPad as the main computer and use the portable monitor as an extended display. Whenever I need to access macOS, I switch to the Mac Mini and use my iPad as a secondary display. Here's a little background about why I'm building this setup. In the last couple months, I've been using a iPad Pro plus Mac Mini combo as my home computer setup. It's mainly for entertainment and light work because I usually do all the work in the office. However, this summer, I went to visit my family and the only thing I got is this little desk. Now I need to do all the productivity tasks over here. After working here for several days, I realized using an iPad as a single monitor is not ideal for a long work session and intense work. Fortunately, thanks to Turn Setups who sent over their portable monitor, I was able to make this new setup possible. I think this monitor is a perfect choice to pair with my iPad Pro, and it's because of its fantastic display panel. It's OLED, so it perfectly matches my M4 iPad Pro screen. It offers true blacks and vibrant colors, as well as a really great contrast. It has a 4K high resolution with 283 ppi. It's even higher than the M4 iPad Pro and MacBook Pro. Actually, I think it's really important to have a portable monitor that has a high resolution, especially when you pair it with Apple products, because MacBooks, iPads, they all have retina displays and the pixel densities are really high. In that case, if you pair them with a budget portable monitor with relatively low resolution, you might feel the experience is not that great because the display quality are just too different with each other. For example, here are a couple common configurations of budget portable monitors, and you can see the PPIs are considerably lower compared to Apple's display. But when I put this 4K portable monitor from Turn Setups next to my iPad Pro, using them together is just a really enjoyable experience. Talking about other specs, it has a 400 nits brightness, 60 Hz refresh rate, and one millisecond response time. What I also really like about this monitor is its color performance. It supports 100% DCI-P3 color space and 10-bit color. It's perfect for content creation, such as photo and video editing and other creative work. I've tried a couple portable monitors, but this is actually the first one I feel confident doing color grading on. As we all know, when we talk about OLED screen, the first impression is always the saturation is super high and it just makes our eyes uncomfortable. But I don't really have that kind of issue on this monitor. When you connect it to a computer, actually, you can switch between different color modes in the monitor setting. For me, because I use it with Apple products, I always choose DCI-P3, which is close to Apple's DisplayP3 color space. This monitor also has a high build quality. It has a slim body and an aluminum frame. The front face also looks clean and modern. It has a flat glass surface with no plastic edges that go around, and the bezels are really thin. It also has a variety of ports, including a full-size HDMI port, two USB-C ports, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and a USB-A port. So it kind of also works like a dock. My iPad Pro doesn't have headphone jack, and my Mac Mini doesn't have USB-A port. So that fixed the problem. Next, I want to talk about the stand. And I think that's definitely the highlight of this portable monitor from Turn Setups. As we can see, this monitor has a built-in kickstand. So no matter where you go, you can just take the monitor itself and start using. However, 
this monitor comes with this tripod thingy. It's actually a magnetic stand for the screen. It's very compact, but you can make it pretty high and then easily snap your monitor to the stand. Now you raise your monitor to eye level, which is perfect for ergonomic reasons. With this stand, you can also use your portable monitor vertically or horizontally. It just makes a lot of things possible. I think this stand is a perfect way to fix the ergonomic issues that happened in many portable desk setups. I've personally tried a couple portable setups. Either I need to put my portable monitor directly on the desk, I always need to look lower, or I need to carry a laptop stand to put my monitor a little bit higher. But now I only need to take this little tripod. It only takes a couple seconds to set up and I can have a comfortable setup that allows me to work for several hours without feeling terrible. If you are a digital nomad or you are looking for a remote work setup, I think this is definitely worth considering. Talking about accessories, the monitor comes with everything you would need including the sleeve back that protects your monitor when you take it outside. I want to talk about portability a little bit. I know I still need a power supply for my Mac Mini, but personally, I still consider the whole setup portable because I don't really need to use this setup without a power outlet, for example, when I'm outdoors or something like that. I think to me, it's more important to have a setup that allows me to pack everything easily and switch between different workspace. For example, when I need to move back to my own place later, I can just put everything in my bag or my luggage and then I'm good to go. Or when I need to bring everything to a new office or a co-working space, I can also easily make it work. Now I want to talk a bit more about how I use my setup. I connect both my iPad Pro and my Mac Mini to the portable monitor. This monitor supports the one cable solution. It's gonna deliver both the power and the image, just like this, connecting to my Mac Mini, iPad, or my MacBook Pro. However, as you can see, I'm doing something different over here. I connect my iPad Pro to the portable monitor through USB-C, and because the iPad is a really small device with a small battery, an external screen is gonna drain the battery pretty fast. But the good thing is, this portable monitor actually supports a 40 watts pass-through power delivery. So what I did is connecting my portable monitor with my MacBook's power brick. And then I used the second USB-C port to connect to my iPad. In this case, the portable monitor gets a very stable power supply. It also charges my iPad. And of course, I can enjoy using the portable monitor as an extended display. You can actually do the same thing if you use a small laptop like a MacBook Air or something like that. With the new iPad OS 26, the experience of using an iPad with an external monitor is actually pretty awesome. I've tried the iPad OS 26 for nearly two months now. And honestly, I feel like with all the multitasking features like the new windowing system, something like that, if I use the iPad by itself, I still don't feel like my productivity gets any enhancement because most of the time I'm dealing with all those difficult gestures or like moving windows around, resizing, something like that. But after I tried the new windowing system with an external display, I suddenly feel like this is how we should use iPad OS 26. Now it really feels like I'm using a Mac. Everything just feels so smooth and familiar. So I think the thing that really limit my multitasking experience on my iPad is the relatively small screen size. With the second monitor, it just becomes easier to spread everything out. You don't need to juggle in between different apps and windows. Because I've already used all the USB-C ports on my portable monitor, I connect my Mac Mini through HDMI. It still gets the work done perfectly. 
Whenever I need to switch to my Mac Mini, I just go to the display menu on the portable monitor and switch the input source to HDMI. My Mac Mini is usually in sleep mode, so now I just need to wake it up. I paired my keyboard and mouse to both my iPad and Mac Mini. Oh, by the way, this is the Logitech Pebble Keys 2, and this is the Logitech MX Master 3S. What I really like about Logitech's products is that they always allow me to pair multiple devices. I paired my Mac Mini to device 1 and my iPad to device 2. When I need to wake up my Mac Mini, I just switch my keyboard and mouse to device 1. And then I can just move my mouse or press a random key on my keyboard. I have the free app Better Display set up on my Mac, so I can quickly adjust the brightness, scaled resolution, and speaker volume of the portable monitor. Yes, it does have a built-in speaker. I also use my iPad as a secondary display using Sidecar. To enable Sidecar quickly, I actually set up a shortcut on my Logitech keyboard. I just press a function key, and now Sidecar is enabled and the window goes down. If I need to move the window back, I press another function key, and it goes back. I just enjoy quickly moving things up and down across those two screens. It's also relatively easy to set it up. After you connect your iPad through Sidecar once on your Mac, under Window over the menu bar, you'll have the option Move to your iPad. That's your iPad's name. On the iPad screen, you can see move window back to Mac. The way to set up a keyboard shortcut for this is to go to System Settings, Keyboard, Keyboard Shortcuts, App Shortcuts, and now you can click the Add button to create shortcuts for those two options. Over here, the menu title, you just copy the exact same text over here. So in my case, there will be move to my iPad and move window back to Mac. Over the keyboard shortcut, I just use whatever ridiculous combinations I can come up with because in that way, I can make sure it's not going to interfere with other things. After having this set up, I open the software that comes with Logitech keyboard, the Logi Option Plus. That's another thing I really like Logitech's keyboard and mouse because they allow me to map a certain keyboard shortcut to a function key on top. Over the Logi Option Plus, I go to my keyboard, and then I select the function key I want to map to. I don't really use the dictation and the screenshot, so I set them to the keyboard shortcuts I just set in my system settings. So now I can use those two function keys on my keyboard to enable Sidecar and also move windows across two screens. I don't think I need to talk too much about how a dual monitor setup can enhance the productivity. Whenever I'm editing videos, I always have my preview windows and timeline on one screen and have my media and beans on another screen. When I do color correction, I always have all my tools on one screen and have a full screen preview on another screen. When I'm doing research or planning anything, I always have my notes on one screen and have my reference web page documents or videos on another screen. I don't need to switch between different apps. After using this setup for nearly a month, I just feel like it saved me so much time when I'm doing productivity work. All right, that's all for today's video. If you are interested in any products I've mentioned in this video, the links are in the description. I also want to know if you do a lot of remote work as well. How's your desk setup look like? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more tech-related content, be sure to subscribe. Now, check out why I chose iPad Pro plus Mac Mini instead of a MacBook. Have a nice day!